Once again, that was beautiful, originally by Crush from the popular drama d o k g e b i but this one was performed by Philip Yunt and Sebastian k n a u r with the Zurich Chamber Orchestra. And we're delighted to have Philip Yunt join us in the, ca- in the studio right now. He is a Swiss flutist who has melded his love for K-dramas with his profession in classical music. and recently released a CD featuring music from Korean dramas performed by world-class musicians. And he has joined us in the studio with violinist Christian Kim. Now, baritone Lee Eun Gwang was also supposed to be um, joining us today, but unfortunately he couldn't join us because of an emergency. But he will be performing songs from the album Shades of Love in a series of concerts here in Korea. So good morning, Philip and Christian, and thank you for joining us on Life Abroad. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you. Can I ask both of you to come a little bit closer to your mic so we can hear you a little better as well? All right. So, Philip and Christian, I know you're both uh, no strangers to the station. You actually appeared on uh, an earlier show a couple of years ago as well, but um, it's been a f- couple of years. Philip, in your case, you returned to Switzerland, where you're from, um, after spending more than a decade here. So, could you introduce yourself once again to our listeners? Yes, hello. It's mm-hmm. a pleasure to be here again. Uh, I'm a flutist from Switzerland originally. I lived in Germany a very long time mm-hmm. and I moved to Korea about 12 years ago. And after about, no, actually 14 years ago. So two years ago, I moved back to Switzerland. Mm-hmm. And now I've been spending a lot of time in Switzerland and Germany mm-hmm. after a really long time in Korea. Right. Um, what brought you to Korea? I mean, 14 years ago, that was what, 2004? Then? It was 2007. Seven? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just seven, shows seven. how good I am with math. Okay. Or maybe my 14 <laughs> years was exaggerated. <laughs> 2007, <laughs> that is right. No, that is right. Okay, so w- what brought you to Korea? I mean, was it K dramas that brought you to Korea? Oh, I would love to say that, but no, it was <laughs> no. much more, much less spectacular than mm-hmm. this. Um, no, I, was, um, I applied for a professor job at a German university. Uh, University of Weimar, uh-huh. and they sent me to Korea. They had a collaboration okay. with a Korean. Did you know that you were going to be sent to Korea yes. when you applied for this job? Y- yes. Okay. It, and I didn't know anything about Korea back uh-huh. then, uh-huh. and I basically came here without knowing absolutely anything about mm-hmm. this country. Must have been a culture shock. I really have to say it yeah. was. Yeah. At the beginning, it mm. really was a complete culture shock. Yeah. And it took me quite a while. to first like it and then absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't you get a reverse culture shock, though, when you go back to your home country? And Switzerland, beautiful as it is, is so different from Korea. The pace, you know, the, the sounds, everything is so completely different. Did you get a culture shock when you moved back? You know, I, I really did to my surprise because I actually went back a lot in these 12 years. Oh, I, went, okay. I went back every month, mm-hmm. one, or, one or two times oh. during 12 years. And so I thought I would not get a culture shock, but... Me having lived in Germany for a long time and mm. then finally going back to Switzerland, yeah. it was very different, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're in Zurich? Is it in Zurich? Close to Zurich. Close yes. to Zurich. Yeah. Okay. And what about you, Christian? Could you also introduce yourself? Well, my name is Christian Kim. I'm a violinist and um, I am half German, half Korean. So mm-hmm. um, it may not have been as much of a culture, sh- culture shock, you might think, compared to Philip, but still moving here f- about six or seven years ago, mm-hmm. initially to, um, for my PhD degree. Um, still, it was also an adjustment for me having grown up in, right. in Germany. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I met Philip uh, at the, the university because I started teaching at Gangnam University five years ago, too. And mm-hmm. He was uh, one of the colleagues there who greeted me very friendly. And, mm-hmm. yeah. You must have been sad to see him go then. Yes, I miss him still. <laughs> <laughs> kind of forced that upon you, sorry. <laughs> yeah. no, that's, no, it's true. No, Can it's you true. ask that question again? <laughs> <laughs> Later on, after, <laughs> off the air. What about uh, getting, I mean, being invited to take part in this project, especially the concert, that must have been thrilling. I mean, with the past two years of the pandemic, I'm sure it's like upended your career, even teaching as well. I don't know if you're still teaching right now. Are you still teaching? Yes, we are teaching. Okay. Thank God we, we were able yeah. to continue Good. teaching in person. But I mean, as for performances, um, I know the classical music concerts may be less affected, uh, be- but um, still, I mean, it must have... brought a lot of uh, kind of disruptions and you weren't able to perform as much. So when you were invited to take part in this concert, how did that feel? Did you kind of jump at the chance? I mean, yeah, I didn't even check back with Philip when I got the invitation. I was just like, (laughs) sure. 
Um, no, it was. I think it was to me. It felt very. Um, very harmonious in the term of Philip told me about this project I think over a year ago mm -hmm. and and I initially already thought this is a fantastic idea it mm -hmm. fits it suits Philip so well so when I <laughs> got asked you knew I about his to, love of K-dramas oh it's just like you, yeah I, I I have to tell the story I think when Philip told me about this album it was over a year ago and we had dinner together I think and he told me about and he showed me like few tracks that were recorded and while we we're having dinner He was receiving texts by someone because, like, some K drama was on the TV right there, uh -huh. airing, and some it was about this episode was about whether the main character was dying or not. And then <laughs> Phil checked his phone and it was like, "Oh, thank God, she's alive." <laughs> <laughs> so, I was afraid of that story. I don't remember that. <laughs> no, and I I just want to say like it's not only that Philip is a wonderful musician <laughs> and has like this. This experience, like being a European right, growing up right. here, but he has really this love and interest <laughs> for this material. Uh -huh. So it's, I think it's a wonderful project. <laughs> yeah, I won't ask you to choose between K dramas or classical music. I, <laughs> I was just going to say, I was a bit afraid of that question. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> well, you know, there a lot of people die in a lot of <laughs> Korean dramas as well. That's funny, though. So let's talk about this uh, love or. Uh, Maybe even obsession with K-dramas, Philip. Um, <laughs> how did it begin? Tell us. Well, I came to Korea, as I said, 12 years ago. And obviously, I was at the beginning alone in yeah. the evenings here. And mm -hmm. um, back then, there were still DVD shops. Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah. You know, that was like a yeah. long time ago. And so in the evenings, I would go to the DVD shops, mm -hmm. which now became Dunkin' Donut shops or something. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I got actually first Korean films. Mm -hmm. But then I started more watching dramas because I just like the, the continuity of, mm -hmm. of the dramas. And I think that Korean dramas are just unbelievably well produced and done in really every level. Mm -hmm. Not only from acting and from the stories, but really from the music, especially recently. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge development within the last 20 years. Uh -huh. Um, of the quality of the dramas. Right. It's just incredible. But there must have been a first one. You're like your first love. Do you remember the first K-drama that kind of like just touched you and said, oh, this is it? Okay. Um, so I watched a couple of other ones, but the first one which really got me, is, it's really tacky and really it's okay, romantic. It's okay. It's okay. No <laughs> shame here. No judgment here. <laughs> it's Taeyang Yi Hue. Taeyang Yi Hue. Descendants of the Sun. Yes, yes. No, I mean, it's a huge, huge drama. It was popular all over the world. Luckily, sure. we're wearing masks, so your <laughs> smile is hidden. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And it had, a, it had a wonderful OST. I do remember that. Yeah, um, it spawned a lot of hit songs from that as well. So what was it? I mean, obviously, it was, the songs are great, but it, was it the romance that appealed to you? Or? Well, <laughs> obviously, it's a beautiful romance yeah. in that show too, but I really do think they're just the quality of, of dramas are yeah. so... incredibly mm -hmm. well done. Okay. And uh, yes, the music too. I think the music <laughs> is very special. One of the dramas that we, um, one of our listeners said was uh, 1988, 응답하라, or Respond 1988, because it had great stories, but also the music as well. And I remember that. And it must be one of your favorites because you are going to be performing um, for us, I believe, in the studio right now. And what song is this? It's a uh, 걱정 말아요, uh -huh. Don't Worry. One of my favorite songs from the song, 걱정 말아요 그대. This is from the OST for the hugely popular 응답하라 1988. And what a treat. Philip Yunt is going to be performing it for us live here in the studio. So, Philip, whenever you're ready.
you very much, Philip. That was gorgeous. That was Philip Yunt live in the studio playing 걱정 말아요 그대 from 응답하라 1988 OST 2311. Our listeners saying, he's live in the studio? Wow, I've never heard a flute version of this song. I have to say, it's such a famous song. And I always naturally associate with the drama and the voice, the vocals behind this. But hearing this, again, for me, it was the first time. It sounds like it was made for the flute. It sounds completely different. It's amazing. So uh, thank you very much for that. Tell us about um, this project then. It's from the Shades of Love album. Um, how do you come up with the song for this, um, for this project? Well, I think what you just said is an interesting point. What we tried is mm-hmm. that basically it's all songs for voice. Yeah. It's like, like pop songs, basically. Exactly. And we're making classical music out of it. Mm-hmm. And I think the key is that not trying to copy the voice, Uh, but really make a known classical piece out of it. And I think many famous old composers like Mozart, Schubert, Schumann, they did the same. They basically took songs from popular songs. Oh. And uh, sometimes Mozart took really beer house music and Schubert <laughs> took some yeah, popular songs and put them into classical music without trying to imitate the voice, but mm-hmm. try to make a known piece of music. And I think that was kind of the key of our CD, mm-hmm. of really putting it into a classical setting. Mm. And I think that's why it, it's, in my opinion... You worked. must have gone through thousands of songs. I mean, you've gone through so many K-dramas. How do yes. you pick the best songs from that and then choose which ones are the best for the classical sort of rearrangements? It was really a long process. I mean, yeah. we, a composer, m a r k e l h e r t e n s h a n and me, we both individually listened to, I would say, two to three thousand songs oh from, from YouTube collections, mm-hmm. from hit collections. And, and then we came... down to about 100 or 80 and then we met and we we talked and Mm -hmm. we compared our our notes and our and i when you were trying to get uh, these world famous musicians to collaborate with you on this album did you have any trouble like hey it's it's music from k dramas and uh, would you like to perform on this album no problem you know it was interesting that um, uh, for me it was important that everyone who is involved had a connection to korea already and everyone involved I kind of performed with them in Korea or or there was some some personal connection to Korea. Mm -hmm. And so now when I asked them, all five, six of them were immediately saying yes. Right. And of course, Christian was one of them as well. Um, Chun Jin, our regular contributor and listener, of course, saying that it was magical. This is so magical. 2784 saying, 비오는 아침과 너무 잘 어울리는 선곡과 연주였어요. 마음이 평화로워지는 느낌이에요. Do you understand that? It was a... Beautiful feeling. And, yep, uh, that yeah, that went very well with this uh, rainy morning. So uh, they feel at peace. Uh, they feel kind of calm because of that performance. Oh, thank you very performance. much. So Christian, um, you're going to be performing on the stage for the Shades of Love, kind of the concert. Um, what songs are you performing on? Is this something that I'm you were familiar with too? I'm performing a few songs oh. from uh, two tracks from Mr. Sunshine, then mm-hmm. from d o k e b i also, and... A few more, and some of them may be a surprise. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, uh, I'm very much looking forward to this. This will be a lot mm-hmm. of fun. Do you, in doing research for it, do you have to go watch the K-drama, or were you already, um, did you know the drama? Or, I mean, how do you prepare for something like this? Because it's different, right? Reinterpreting yeah. it in a classical way? Uh, I mean, I think I agree very much with what Philip said. In, in one way, good music... It, It's very universal. Like it almost doesn't matter if it's like su- it's different, of mm-hmm. course. But if it's re- really good music, if it's being sung or being played or reinterpreted in this different format, it doesn't matter. If you go historically, it's it always works, mm-hmm. sort of. So, of course, I I think um, unlike Philip, maybe I don't watch that much. K-drama. No, <laughs> it can still come. <laughs> but, no, but but truth to be told, so I I did watch a few. And um, since uh, working for this project, I really love the d u k a b i soundtrack, for mm-hmm. example, so much. I will watch that show because of the music. Yes. Yeah, so I watched um, of the tracks that I will perform together with Philip. I watched at least one episode to mm-hmm. get a feel for the piece. I haven't watched the entire show. What's shows. the song? You said a couple of songs from d u k a b i or? Yes, we're doing the, like, the main theme we're doing from d u k a b i And then for Mr. Sunshine, also, we're doing two different mm-hmm. tracks. And I think to, at least to understand what the setting or what the synopsis overall is will already give you a certain feeling mm-hmm. for like, how this 
what kind of approach you want to have. Right. Um, some of our listeners are saying that Tokebi and Tokebi OST is the best. It's amazing. Um, yeah. 5138, you read my mind. I was going to say Tokebi is my favorite. The OST, yeah, the incredible. cast, the backdrop, mm. Triple Crown. So the Shades of Love album was actually released worldwide on July 9th, and it bears a renowned classical record label, Deutsche Grammophon, and also, like you said, a stellar lineup of classical musicians. Now, let's talk about the concerts that you're going to be performing here in Korea. When and where? How many concerts? Tell us about that. We have one concert this Friday. We have another one next week on Thursday. We Mm -hmm. have a couple of concerts in November. And we're just now looking into into more um, in Korea. And the the European concerts, obviously, this year are are Mm cancelled because in Europe it's difficult to do concerts this year. But we're looking into next year. Uh-huh. Uh, summer. Yeah. Where are you performing here in Korea? And are the tickets still available? Yes, but if I would know the name of the city, <laughs> um, I think we need some help with that. Or maybe we can look it up online. Is it if the tickets are on sale, we can just look it up online? Yes, yes Philip. It might have been good to I'm have that information. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try to find that information as yes. well for because I'm sure our listeners are very interested in this as well. Um, tell us about the album, the 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 title though, "The Shades of Love." It almost sounds like a K drama title. Why did you name it "Shades of Love"? Yeah, the title of the city was a very long process. We were looking into different uh, titles of songs as title of the city. Now, a couple of years ago, the composer Marco Hertenstein. came to Korea and wrote a piece about Korea. Mm -hmm. And there was two pieces, one red and one blue, like the Korean flag. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very uh, thematic about uh, Korean atmospheres, like, for example, evening scenes in Seoul. And and we decided to call the whole city about these two pieces who are actually the only pieces who are not OST songs, Mm -hmm. but they're written about Korea. They're like an homage to Korea, kind of. So it's Shades of Love. Mm -hmm. is the title of these two songs. Mm -hmm. And the entire album will be played at the concert, as well as some other songs? Yeah, we don't have the entire album. I think we have about six songs from the album, and then we have a couple of other OST Mm -hmm. uh, or songs, music, which are used in in Korean. All right. So for our listeners, I'm sure you are burning to find out more information about this concert. Uh, We will try to provide that information and put it up on our social media. Philip will fill us in on the details, hopefully. And uh, I want to thank you once again, Philip Yunt and Christian Kim. Thank you very much for joining us. Best of luck on the album and the concerts as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you. 